Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Signcast. I'm Madeline Johnson. I'm the host, and I'm SignUp's content and community manager. Today, I'm talking with Judy Lynn about the ins and outs of digital marketing, from running her own agency and supporting clients to her own journey in the SEO world. So it's going to be a good one. Judy, mm -hmm. why don't you kick us off by telling everybody a little bit about yourself, how you got started in the space? Sure. Thanks, Madeline. Thanks for inviting me. Um, I'm the CEO of Digital Marketing Doctor Agency here in Carlsbad, California, and I started from the internet industry where I was director of marketing and I was responsible for PPC, SEO, paid media, and you know I was in the industry for about 15 years. And when I was working for someone, I kept getting laid off. So it just reached a point where I just didn't want to be laid off anymore, even though I had one of the highest performance reviews. And so I started my own consulting and I started with one little doctor and that account became my biggest account. Mm -hmm. And then I kept adding on more people and fast forward 20 years later, I have an entire team of 11 people, 11 to 12 people on the team, and we service the entire gamut of SEO, paid search, web design. We now also have hosting, content marketing, blogs, video, podcasting, backlinks, everything. So we, we've become, yeah, yeah, we've become like a one-stop shop solution now for most clients because most clients, they don't want to talk to like six, eight people, you know, mm -hmm. they want to go to one person and if they have a problem with graphics or the web design, or they need an update. They just want to go to one person, and have you handle everything. So we become pretty much that a one-stop shop for, for digital right. marketing. Yeah. I love that approach. It's so smart. Cause I feel like a lot of people always say they're an expert in one thing. And then suddenly right. you have to find if you're a company or you're a brand, you suddenly have to find four or five experts just to manage this one part of your business, which is right. <laughs> defeats the purpose and makes it a lot more complicated. So yeah, I love that you guys do mm -hmm. everything. Certainly incredible. Yeah. I'd, I'd love to hear a little bit more about how you approach the strategy for your clients. What's, what's your tactic? Sure. So typically when a new client comes to us, we do an SEO audit of their website, how much traffic they're getting, um, how much impression, click-through rate, all of that on the technical side. But typically I, I like to interview the client myself and get to know them. I like to understand their brand, their services, what their positioning is, if they have one. Sometimes, surprisingly, some brands don't really know who they are just yet. I mean, it, it's a little, but that's why they come to us, right? Right. It's like, sometimes they don't know exactly who their target market is or what kind of company they want to be. Do they want to be a technology company? Do they want to be a consulting company? Um, do they want to be a, a specialized, specialized in a specific area? So mm -hmm. I think the most important in the very beginning is knowing who you are, your messaging, your positioning, your brand, because the brand will dictate how you message and how you communicate out through all the different venues. So you can't be inconsistent. You say you're a technology company and then you're saying you're a call center somewhere else. You know, it's, right. it depends. I mean, so there's some overlap. I think it's really important to know specifically who you are. And then from there, you branch out to the different digital venues. Right, right. <clears throat> yeah, you have to have like that good foundation of having like a clear <clears throat> brand vision and like a clear, this is who we are. Because right. yeah, then it gets way and too same, complicated. And same tagline. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, I've I've definitely found my fair share of companies online where maybe they haven't <laughs> updated their website or maybe different people worked on different pages, but it's like the messaging's <laughs> all over the place, and right, I'm like, what's right. going on? <laughs> yeah, that's so funny. Yeah. Oh my god. So so you you start with like defining the brand, and then how do you kind of determine what the client ends up needing? Like, obviously you guys do everything, but- um... Right. So most of the time when we land a new client, you're somewhat inheriting the client from the former consulting company, right? So mm -hmm. um, what happens is if we inherit a new client from some other 
agency, we take a look at what has been done, where what has not been done. And surprisingly, sometimes, you know, you go into, let's say, a WordPress website, you go to check the metadata or the back end, and you don't see any work done. And you no. wonder, well, what, what have they been doing for the last few years if they can't do something <laughs> as basic as that, right? right. And it, it's sad to say, but sometimes the clients don't understand the digital world or the digital mm -hmm. language. So, you know, if they don't know what they're paying for. And so I act as a translator, as a communicator as well, is to translate, well, why are we doing paid search? Why are we mm -hmm. doing, um, you know, organic organic SEO, basically? And those, the, the, most of the reason is at the end of the day, the clients, they just want to generate leads, mm -hmm. right? Everybody just wants to generate leads. So I explain to them, okay, these are the different campaigns that we do in order to drive traffic, in order to drive brand awareness and conversions into your site. So you could mm -hmm. have new clients and more revenue or increase your revenue. So we pretty much take a step back and look at what has been done prior to us coming on board. And we either improve or ax the campaigns, or we set a new parameter of new campaigns that we think will be more um, effective and more successful. And right. so a lot of it is we, we have to look at some reporting. There's the technical aspect of it. We look at a lot of the reporting of the traffic wise and, and ask, well, why is it that it's not generating this much X amount of leads of what they want? So mm -hmm. I typically work with a client in deciding what their monthly goals are and what they want in leads and conversions. And then I devise the digital strategies into get there. I think <clears throat> doing the actual work is the easy part, you know, creating the SEO campaigns, whether it's content writing or we call it localization pages or blog optimizations, that's the easy part. But what right. happens with a lot of agencies, they're not, they're not piecing it together into a holistic approach. Mm -hmm. So when I'm doing blog optimization and someone's working on, let's say, you know, the user friendliness of the website, it's all interrelated because all these campaigns essentially are driving traffic into your website. And that is the ultimate goal, right? Mm -hmm. But a lot of times agencies, they're doing things silo and they're not communicating and they don't realize, oh, that graphic that I did for Facebook ads is going to affect the metrics when the person that actually does a paid media and runs the campaign, you yeah. know, if they have a spelling error where the link doesn't work or it's broken, it's all interrelated. So my approach is very holistic with clients. You know, it's my writing when I write for them, either in let's say the interview questions for the video or it gets translated into some sort of blog content or a content on the on the website it, it matters because you're speaking the same uh, message across the board and mm -hmm. you know we got to be really clear and very precise with that yeah yeah I, I love that and it does make sense because it's if you're starting the process yeah. by saying like let's get this down like let's see what we're about then if you have a bunch of different people who run off with that and aren't synced up in their actions then you right. end up with a bunch of different results yeah well the other thing madeline that i think what happens is there's been cases where clients in the past have spent an enormous amount of money let's say let's say they spent something like 10,000 on some banner on a tennis court or on a signage <laughs> and i'm thinking $10,000 that you blew on a signage I could have mm -hmm. used that in my budget for SEO or paid search, right? Right. And the longevity is so much, so much, so much longer and sustainable if it's online because mm -hmm. it's evergreen, right? If you yeah. have something that's on the internet, it's evergreen until someone deletes it or takes it off the page. Whereas, you know, I understand print and radio, the traditional route, which I've done in the past it's a little more antiquated unless you have a physical shop or you have a, a physical office or a, mm -hmm. or a dental practice or medical practice. That makes sense. I, I get that. But I think the core of your work should be digital and online because that's what people do every day, right? They search, they do Google search. If you're not coming up in the first couple pages, you know, there's a, there's a understanding and perception of clout also. 
If I right. Google, you know, let's say an eye surgeon or an orthopedic surgeon in my area in Carlsbad, and they're not even showing up at all on the first page, I'm going to question yeah. them. <laughs> you know, are they? I'm not going to go to that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I definitely agree with that. I like what you said about the having things on the web has so much more longevity. And I feel like that's, right. that's something so crazy where when I look something up I don't remember what I looked up recently I may have looked up like what do you do when two dogs are fighting like should you regulate it or should you ignore them and an article came up that was from a blog that might have been published five years ago seven years ago it it was still relevant information it was still on the internet like if you go through the work and do the proper SEO, you do the proper foundational steps. You don't have to go and spend another 10K on a billboard, you know, like it's still going to be there. It's still going to show up. Right. Unless you have a competitor or some other writers that row about the same topic and they're going to flush you out, so to speak. Right. You know, they, they have pretty much dominated the internet where they're showing up first. Um, Before I forget, the other thing I want to tie into is also the online reputation So, you know, when we were talking about having your search results show up in the first top three positions or rankings, you know, there's definitely a clout level, you know, that's being seen. Mm -hmm. And also your reviews matter, your online reputation. I mean, it doesn't matter how beautiful your site is or how, um, how great of work you do. If you don't have that customer experience or that patient experience, and right. and serving at that five star level, you're gonna have a problem, you know. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, people um, people don't want to go somewhere that's unknown. They don't want to be the beta right. tester of a doctor or a business or anything. <laughs> exactly. And also, you want to be treated right. You know. I mean, mm-hmm. there's so many surgeons you could go to, and maybe they have a similar. They may be technically all good but are you going to go with someone that is more personable and likable and you feel a trust level? Of course, you're going to go with someone that you have a stronger trust level. Right. So, you know, so that's also part of the branding. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I I feel like, especially in your field where you're focused a lot on medical groups and like doctor groups and things like that, maybe I'm using the wrong terms because I'm not (laughs) versed in the (laughs) industry, but (laughs) obviously you have to like think of the customer kind of first and foremost because it's such a personal thing and I feel like that's something that a lot of brands ignore is like actually there's a person who's searching for a exactly. product right touching upon the whole customer experience is also something that I constantly learn even at even at where I'm at in my agency mm-hmm moving forward 20 years, it's, I'm constantly learning about how that ties into my work. You know, why is Mm -hmm. a client staying with you? Why is one leaving? I mean, you got to think about all this and that does go back to your customer relationships or client relationships. And how, how do you define customer success? I mean, you know, if you're smart, you would have maybe been a little more attentive throughout the entire journey of every touch, they call it touch point before Mm -hmm. they dropped. Right. Mm -hmm. But you got to figure out where in that journey was the drop off. Yeah. Or how could you have, or how could you have prevented it or personalized your services even greater so that they they don't want to leave because now they're, they're, they are confident in all that you do and they trust you and they're going to let you lead. I mean, that's, that's the ideal client right there. Right. You know? Right. But I think a lot of times people may see business as, you know, I, I hate this using this word, but transactional, mm-hmm. you know, you pay for your goods, your products get shipped or you pay for the services it's done. And then, right. Bye. <laughs> I mean, it, it's, it's not in that way. I mean, I think all the successful businesses know that the customer journey is one of the top areas that needs constant attention and improvement mm-hmm. on and you know it's something that I like to incorporate in what we do I'm usually the client interface for the clients mm-hmm. so I talk to them on a regular basis and I give them pretty much a summary rundown of what is being done and what we're working on and at, you know and translate any 
misunderstandings or you know their lack of not understanding what uh, not understanding what some digital campaigns are for right so. right yeah yeah i i love i love that you incorporate that i definitely have seen this trend where yeah the companies that focus on the customers the companies that are customer obsessed at every level are the ones that end up retaining customers end up getting more reviews end up ranking mm-hmm. higher because people are talking about them online like the more the more you can create this great relationship every step of the way like it's mm-hmm. the more your company's going to thrive well if you if we reverse this and so let's say i'm the client right and you're the agency provider mm-hmm. i don't want to have to keep searching for someone every few years because right. it's like starting over and if i stay with someone they become a partner for you rather than just a vendor because Mm -hmm. they know every gamut of every campaign that you've ran they know your brand they know how you speak you they know your messaging they know pretty much all of it and if you stop and go all the time it's very difficult to succeed like that Mm -hmm. you know if you're with someone let's say for a couple years and for whatever reason there's a departure and separation then you have to hire a new person it really is like starting all over again but if you stay with someone for eight years you're going to go so much further the the mileage is much greater right right um I'd love to hear is there any way that you kind of incorporate this kind of customer obsession customer journey focus into the way that you actually carry out the digital marketing strategy so typically clients are with me between two to six years Mm-hmm. And let's say I'll, I'll pick a, pick someone that's like on the, on the longer end and we might start really small in the initially. Mm-hmm. Okay. Is that I get hired for a basic level of services. Let's say one, two, five, five different things. And I'm okay with that because we're building a relationship, right? right. And I'm getting to know them. They're getting to know me. But what happens is we start from a foundational level of SEO and some other campaigns and we build upon, we pretty much have to show ourselves and prove ourselves and we deliver. What happens is through that process, the client's looking at you now, oh, wow, she, they actually succeeded and they did mm-hmm. well and they're, they're giving us traffic and they're, you know, we're seeing that, you know, we're ranked in the, not, in the top three for organic and paid. Oh, they're performing, they're high performers now. Right. So then what happens is I say, okay, well, I have another idea. I think we should do some brand videos and client testimonials. And then we should do more of a series of podcasts because the podcast rankings index quicker and faster on Google search. Mm -hmm. So now they're more open to receiving ideas from you because you have been successful. This is kind of the customer journey relationship that I'm talking about. If I had pitched that immediately, They may have said, well, why would I do that? Why would I want to spend all of this money immediately when I haven't seen anything that you've done? Yeah. And so part of my customer success is it's like, you know, you're you're gradually building relationship and introducing them to new campaigns. And then it reaches a point where they just let you lead everything. And that's Mm -hmm. what has happened with some clients. So I just tell them, okay. You know, I think we should increase X amount of the budget on paid media. We need to add some video testimonials into that paid media, or I think we should do a podcast series on um, cardiovascular health. And then Mm -hmm. we should do, so they become very open and they become excited now and they understand. So, you know, if, if I didn't nurture that relationship and build that rapport, it may not have extended as long as it had. Right. I see. Yeah. Yeah. I love, I love that approach. I think that's, that's so true. You have to get trust with your clients yeah. before, before they'll trust you to do more. And you're personalizing your relationship, right? I mean, a lot of times I hear this a lot is that clients will complain about a certain agency that they've had for a couple of years and I ask, well, why did you leave? And they say, because, you know, they have too many other clients were neglected. I hear right. this often. And I, you know, when clients call me, I pick up the phone and I'm talking to them and I'm 
pretty much within 24 hours, we're fixing the problems, whether it's, it's, you know, some sort of error breakdown on the internet, or we have to swap out some graphic. I mean, we're on it within 24 hours. How many agencies do that? Yeah. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why they like us because we're our turnaround time and our response level is very high, mm -hmm. you know, whereas, you know, you ask someone to change, let's say a graphic to take them like a week. <laughs> <laughs> changing one I, thing add it to the list yeah. well let's see if you get them on the phone <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah I, I, I definitely feel like that's something that's lost as as companies get bigger like it's easier to have this like kind of silo effect it's easy to have this thing where the clients get neglected so yeah I, I feel right. like it's so it's so important to just like go client first go I'm going to give everybody individual attention that they deserve that they need exactly that's going to make them the, grow more the personalization is very important in client mm -hmm. relationship right i mean that's how you ultimately grow the relationship to be bigger than it was before mm -hmm. and you're now more of a partner and you're discussing ideas together it's not it's not like i pay you you give me the product and you know, I decide if I like it or not. And if I don't like it, then I just move on to the next, you know, supplier or, or, you know, provider. And, exactly. um, you know, that I, I'm more about focusing on the client and I like to nurture them to VIP clients because everyone wants to be treated that way. Right. And there's a reason why successful people will pay for that as well. Mm -hmm. Right. It's hard right. to find as it is. So the more rare, the more they're willing to. Mm -hmm. That's great. That's great. Um, so when you are kind of working on these strategies, working on these relationships, as you kind of ramp up what you're doing for clients, I'd love to hear more about how do you decide what to do next? Obviously it's different for every brand, but when it comes to digital marketing, there's so many proverbial baskets that you could put your eggs sure. into yeah so in, in seo there's what you call on page and off page seo and on page is essentially all the bells and whistles of metadata and h1 tags etc cetera, etc cetera. it gets very technical that right. you know you I, I always use the analogy of like turning on a house you need the plumbing the lighting everything it's the same thing with a website so that's a base basic level of building the SEO. Then the, the, then there's the off-page SEO, which is multiple strategies that you do from backlinks to paid media to PPC, you know, all anything that's a campaign outside of the website that's driving in, that is off-page. Mm -hmm. But let's say a new client comes and they're, let's say they're, they're launching a restaurant. So I would probably go for PPC first, the Google sponsor ads, because they need quick advertisement immediately. So I mm -hmm. think any company that has a product they want to launch immediately, I think PPC is great for the short term. Right. And it's a great announcement um, for that brand as well. But SEO is always the long game mm -hmm. and it will be less costly as well because seo is what you do every day it's yeah it's the blogs that you write every day it's the videos that you post it's the social media marketing it's it, it's the daily tasks of everything that you need for seo that's the long game mm -hmm. but you know if you can do both and you have the budget to do both that's always great but for a smaller client that doesn't have a big budget you know what that's that has you know, m several million, they're going to shoot for the SEO side for sure. Mm -hmm. right. Um, But I'm a big proponent of videos and podcasts. <laughs> As you know, I'm on podcasts yeah. because <laughs> people nowadays love videos and, and podcasts because it's more personable and the media side is going to be more compelling than reading pages and pages and pages of text and articles and it also ranks a lot faster and higher surprisingly mm -hmm. I mean I've, I've seen that happen with clients is we produce x amount of videos and they could be a main video plus 
let's say I, we call it the snippets or the shorts of the 30 seconds to one minute that is being um, syndicated on LinkedIn, Facebook, you know, all mm -hmm. the social media, Instagram and videos and podcasts, it, they just, they just seem, I don't know, it seems like Google search favors that more. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Because, I, I definitely, yeah. I definitely have seen that too. Sorry. Continue. Yeah. No, no, you're good because, you know, if you Google a brand's name, I mean, of course, if you, you, you should show up for your own brand name, mm -hmm. if you don't, that's a problem. But when you go to the video page, it's, you're pretty much everywhere, everywhere, especially with, with the, the hashtags, mm -hmm. you know, and with all the podcast platforms nowadays, it's right. very interrelated. It's, it's definitely been crazy to see this kind of evolution of Google search where Google's kind of slowly but surely integrating more social media results into right. like the search results. You'll Google a company, you'll Google a brand and it'll have their website, but it'll also have their Facebook page. It'll have tweets that mention them. It might even exactly. link to their Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> so, so all of that, that we talked about the off page on page and the videos podcast that that's all SEO juice. Mm -hmm. This is all SEO juice to boost your brand and that's where the tipping point happens when you flood the market or the internet was so much that if you if you are i guess the word aggressive about it and it also depends on your budget you can definitely dominate that world on on internet and that right. is why some people are are ranked and indexed much higher than your competitors because they're they're doing everyday tasks to to promote it if you're not mm -hmm. writing blogs you're not producing any content you're not speaking you're not on videos you will drop off even if you're in the top number one number two number three i've seen people that were number one is eye surgeons in newport carlsbad and they drop from number one to like not even in the top four oh. <laughs> <laughs> happens you there's an upkeep mm -hmm. It's right. almost like an athlete practicing, right? It's if you don't practice and you don't produce, you will drop off even though you were in the top rankings. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that's something that I definitely appreciate about SEO as I've been personally learning yeah. about it, like getting more into the digital marketing space is that you really cannot fake it. Like you have to you can't fake actually it, right? do it. <laughs> like exactly. you, can, you can buy ads and pretend like you get some traffic but like the organic traffic if you're not doing the work it's just not going to be there exactly and then also when you talk to people you can sense their knowledge level right you know like even because I'm in the industry I can tell immediately in five minutes <laughs> how the person is you know and right. it you know this this work is not like you take a couple courses in digital marketing, now you're an expert, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, you gotta have some background and history of being successful in providing work and have some success stories to tell. It's not just this quick little, you know, you get certified for a few courses and that's it, you know? And yeah. you can tell in the quality of work and the way they speak and their language on what is real, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For people who, are not experts by any means like how would you go about telling is this person for real um well are you saying are they learning from you or are you saying am i, am I identifying if they're a fraud or not maybe maybe seeing if they're being genuine about the amount of knowledge they have so like are they a fraud or are they right. actually knowledgeable right so um i see this often <laughs> with clients that have come to me and I feel bad that they spent all this money on them for a couple of oh, years no. and then I'm looking at like well what what did they what did they produce they said well they sent mm -hmm. me monthly traffic reports every month I said well yeah but what did they do like what tactics or what campaigns did they produce and they just keep talking about the monthly reports and then I just say well that only takes me like five minutes to go into analytics or SEM rush to pull the report for you. I and mean, it's not <laughs> difficult. Um, I think how you tell is they can't deliver and they can't show you and they don't have any form of results to show mm -hmm. you. I mean, there's just no proof of evidence except 
that they're very good at sales and they they right. talk a good game. They've sold you a story, you know, and some people are very good. I mean, that's why they're salespeople too, but it's just, they sold you a story and um, they may have promised you something that is most likely not attainable because I think there are some SEO guys that come out of the gate and they say, oh, we can get you up on the rankings within three months. No mm. problem. Three months or maybe in two weeks. And when I hear oh, that, I say, are you kidding me? <laughs> it takes me three months just to build out the content and, right. and the campaigns and to generate some sort of momentum. It takes that long to just build the momentum. It's mm. not possible unless you do black hat and that is illegal. There's white yeah. hat and black hat, you know? Um, but I think you can tell pretty quickly, you know, you, you'll see the mask is taken off within a few months. It's mm -hmm. obvious. Right. Right. So. Yeah. I, I think that's, that's maybe why it can be so tempting is that actually building great SEO takes a lot of time and a lot of effort. And if someone promises it, oh, we could do it in three weeks or like, oh, we could do it in three months, then the person might say, that's the person I want to go with. <laughs> I mean, there's no shortcuts you know? Right. So sorry. I'm just like <clears throat> my throat. <laughs> no, you're good. You're good. Um, yeah, we've been talking a lot, so take a rest if you need. <laughs> hey, you're good. Um, <laughs> and it's also like sickness season. So yeah, <laughs> it's, it's rainy here. It's like, it's been raining for like the last five days here, which, oh, yeah. which is unusual, <laughs> but that, is, it's that is strange. Maybe good, good for the earth, but bad for. Yes. Well, we need, <laughs> we're always in drought here in California. So it's yeah. definitely a good thing. <laughs> um, yeah. I'd, I'd love to hear about like what you think are the most foundational aspects of SEO and how you think those might even ch be changing will they change or will they stay the same yeah so I mean just on a general level I think a lot of people have talked about artificial intelligence right and how that's going to come into any of the any of the digital world and you know they I heard there's some content writing that can be reproduced through artificial intelligence mm -hmm. and I think okay well yeah maybe they could write some content for you the duty is done is there any soul in that writing probably not is there any emotional effect in that writing probably not are there keywords yes there probably will be keywords but you know when you're up against something like artificial intelligence I think it's important to recognize you know at the end of the day we're talking to human beings you know right. and the personalization of service is always going to outshine any form of technology. You know, if technology is great to enhance what you do, it's a supplementary, totally. but you know, I'm sure I'll probably get a bunch of people that want to argue this, but you know, we're all, we have our own perspectives on things, but as an agency owner, I will utilize technology in the best way possible for, things that are needed, like, you know, the reporting, the performance metrics, things like that. Mm -hmm. But I will never replace my writers. You know, I think my writers will write more from, you know, an emotional level, which is required in good writing is yeah. how do you draw someone in? And in the customer service level, the personalization how is going to be important. I mean, just as a as a simple example, when you call a bank or hotel, a credit card, no one wants to be on that automated service. Everyone's trying to bypass that, right? Mm -hmm. Wouldn't it be nice if someone could just pick up the phone within two rings or three rings yeah. and you talk to a human person? Everybody wants to talk to a human voice. Most people do. But then there's some people, I guess, don't want to I you know that's another <laughs> you already know what I'm talking about yeah that's but, a whole other category <laughs> yeah yeah that's you're talking about introverts extroverts they don't want to engage with people I mean that's a whole nother thing but I I feel that technology is to be used but not to replace people right I I definitely agree with that I definitely you know? agree with that um, yeah, as a content writer myself, I've been playing around with um, like oh, wow. GPT yeah. and it's, it's crazy that it can do so well, but also 
kind of reassuring that it can only do so much, you know, like it, right. it's never, it's, and I've, I've definitely seen also that um, just on Twitter, pe- different people testing it out and then Google kind of recognizing that it's not, um, I know that Google has been doing a lot of stuff to kind of fight against, no, you shouldn't be able to rank with an AI produced um, yeah. article. Like you, that's not fair. Cause then you could just what produce thousands of, AI written articles full of keywords and then exactly. suddenly suddenly you'll be I mean I ranking. I've already been pitched by people to to come in and help my agency with AI articles and you know it's supposed to be this new hot thing to be utilized mm-hmm. to help with your SEO rankings but you know even before this this AI technology and this content writing I was always about editorial you know, right. I was a writing major. I was an English major, writing major. I, you know, I, I do a lot of writing currently, mm-hmm. but I, w- I would always choose quality editorial over keywords, mm-hmm. even though technically I'm supposed to embed and sprinkle these little keywords. If an article doesn't make sense and you're just trying to force the keywords in, what is the point? There is no right. point. Right. You know, I mean, people are drawn in because they want to read the story about the client or your product or something. They, it, It's not just a bunch of fillers coming in just because it needs to be done, you right. know. So I, I'm definitely a big proponent of editorial, regardless of the technical aspect or the technical requirements. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Right. I, I think that's that's such a like specific still skill to be cultivating and something really only a person could do, which is writing writing something that a person would want to read, but also like being able to when necessary kind of incorporate the keywords in without making it sound ridiculous. <laughs> or manipulated. Yeah. It's definitely mm-hmm. being manipulated if you tell your writer, okay, you have to put in these 10 keywords no matter what. Right. Right. I mean, seriously, <laughs> I mean, you know, I don't say that to them. I always to say, here's, here's a few, here are the top search keywords. If it makes sense for you to use them and it flows, then do, but if it doesn't, mm-hmm. then don't, you know? Right. So right. yeah, right. that's, that's, that's so important. That's so important. Yeah. I, I definitely, it's interesting to see where things going. Definitely things like Google's helpful content updates, stuff like that kind of reinforces, oh, no, we're never just going to accept these articles that are chock full of keywords. Like we want to make sure this is actually a helpful thing. Like this should actually be a resource people want to click on, people want to read this article, people want to engage with this content. It's not just robot blabber. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, it's really important to deliver value in what you do. If there's no value in what you do, what is the purpose? Right, right. You know, it's just, you just got to really think about that in what you do. I mean, even when you do an interview and videos, you know, people would ask, well, how do you know what questions to ask? Well, this is your opportunity to show the audience or let the client show their personality their style, their tone, you know, who they are, what they want to deliver as a message. So it's important to show all of that in your content and your questions. There's some strategic process that needs to happen before, before the interview. And I think sometimes people want to just wing it. You could wing it if you really know your material well. If you, right. if you don't know your material, you're going to, you're not going to do as well, you know? So mm-hmm. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And I I feel like that that comes back to like a good a good SEO, a good content creator is going to be, as you said earlier, like this kind of translator, like you're taking information that you're an expert on and you're translating it to your audience. You're making it intelligible. Yeah. Yeah. And the client doesn't have to know exactly what AdWords is or analytics. They just need to know what's the end goal of what you're doing and they just need to understand layman terms why you're doing that and what's the end goal 
And at the end of the day, clients really don't care what digital campaign or platforms you're using. They're right. looking at your revenue and they're looking at your conversions at the end of the month. So that's right. what everybody wants. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Um, I do have just one last question, which sure, is sure. for those people who are maybe feeling like they're lacking in SEO strategy, they're just like getting into the digital marketing side of things, or maybe mm -hmm. want to revamp, like where, where's the first place to start? Yeah, well, you definitely need a website of your own business, right? And, um, you know, I've spoken at USC for the young entrepreneurs there, mm -hmm. and they asked this question too. <laughs> so, well, where do you start? Well, I hope you decide on a on a business that you enjoy mostly. Mm -hmm. It's not like you're, I mean, of course, we all need to make money and, you know, pay our bills and so forth, but um, you want to have a website that is very compelling, engaging, and shows who you are, not just offline, but online. Like for example, let's say you go to a conference and you're speaking at this conference and they go back and Google you and look at your website. Are you matching the same level as a website, mm -hmm. as a person? So your website presentation matters. Um, also delivering your content, you got to decide what is, what is, what is making you shine above the noise, you know, mm -hmm. because there's going to be so, it depends on what industry you are. You always got to think, how do I be seen out of that saturation? Right. And as far as the SEO, yeah, you can start basic with the social media marketing, the blogs, um, getting some guest posting. You can it's it's very easy you can just google the basics of seo what you can do on the keyword search but you have to build a lot of content initially and i think the fastest thing that you could do is build a website build out some videos and podcasts and social media to start mm -hmm. off with then you could get more granular and if you have more of a budget then go into the paid paid media and the ppc right. but um it's it's a constant learning process. I think people tend to give up very easily. They think, mm -hmm. oh, I'm not showing anything on the internet for six months, I'm gonna stop. No, this is an investment and a commitment if you wanna do this. And sometimes your SEO results didn't, won't show up until after a year, Right. you know? And exactly. it, it's, it's definitely a commitment. It's not, you know, a fast, it's not a fast turnaround game. You know, if you, if you're looking for that, then um, you probably don't want to be an entrepreneur. You know, mm -hmm. if you want to be an entrepreneur, you have to have high discipline, high grit, high uh, stamina, <laughs> right? you know, and the constant education. But um, yeah, I think, you know, the most basic level is just to start with having your website, deciding who you are, your positioning, your branding, have your basic stuff ready. Like your, mm -hmm. I call it the basic collateral, your website, your logo, your tagline, a summary of who you are. And then after you have the basics down, then decide, okay, how am I going to present myself on social media, on the videos, on the podcast, and then build relationships with people also, other guest bloggers, um, you know, there's other companies that could help you depending on what you're doing. That could be affiliate marketing, but there's so many ways to go about it. But I was to start with a very basic level first and get that right. done. I mean, I didn't come into doing digital, knowing everything right away. Exactly. Like I said, I started with a really small account. <laughs> it was a very, you know, a, you got to be from, you start from a humble place and mm -hmm. a little small account. And then I became, I was very eager to learn as I go. So you just, there is, it's not like you just arrive, you're constantly going and you're constantly learning no matter what level you are. That's how, how, how it, how the journey is really. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You just have to start building the foundation and keep going. Yeah. And then you're experimenting in the beginning, you know, you might think, oh, this is a route. Why am I not getting enough video views? Well, maybe because it's only been two months. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. 
Maybe you know? nobody knows who you are. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, it's what 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 do they say with entrepreneurs? You throw something at the wall, and you keep throwing it at the wall until something sticks. Right. You know, to be more to be a little more grounded with that philosophy is like, you know, when I work with my clients and I have running, let's say 10, 15 different campaigns simultaneously at the end of the month, I do look at what's performing and what's not performing. The campaigns are not performing. You delete and ax immediately and you mm -hmm. optimize on the ones that do. And that's what you want to do as an entrepreneur is to see you know, where your investments and ROI and your commitment and energy level is going. If you're giving 80% to one channel or one venue and it's not delivering, I would just keep experimenting until you see some sort of traction going on. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that's, that's something that in the kind of instant gratification era that we're in, like people, yeah. people give up very quickly because they're very easy. If the first thing doesn't work. So yeah, that's, that's great advice. That's great. It's good to remember that. <laughs> yeah. And then, you know, it's, it's also remember you're experimenting in the beginning, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, it's until, until you master certain parts, you're still, on, you're always on a perpetual learning curve in some ways, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, there's even where I'm at now, I'm still learning new ways of doing business, right. And right. new ways of, I'm always looking for new ways to market. It's not just the gamut of what I've served. I think even with everything I have served in the gamut of digital marketing, which is like a huge umbrella, I'm still looking for new ways because that's what I, that's what we're supposed to do. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's cool to be in an industry that's always changing, evolving, and evolving like always more to learn it's exciting <laughs> it is it is I mean you know I'm not an accountant I, I wouldn't survive in that world <laughs> <laughs> I don't think anything has changed in accounting since Excel was invented <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I have friends that are accountants so I'm not you know so I'm just saying like I, they're is, probably gonna listen to this yeah. well, thanks Judy <laughs> yeah this is not an accountant slander podcast to be clear <laughs> Uh, um so. yeah yeah that's a that's a perfect place to wrap up so yes thank you so much judy you've given us yes. so much so much great experience you are obviously an expert you are not a fake seo guru <laughs> <laughs> this is awesome this has been judy lynn her information will be in the podcast details and yeah we'll see you next week on the signcast bye thank everyone. you madeline <laughs> Thank you.